I'll go ahead and call this uh, this October 24th meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission to order. And we first have to approve the agenda. So planning commissioners, uh, when you're ready, I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. Moved by John, do we have a second? I'll second. Second from Ariane. Those in favor of uh, approving the uh, agenda, say aye. 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 Me opposed? Agenda deemed approved. Okay, we have comments from the chair. Um, you know, you've got some presentations tonight, so I don't wanna take up any time. Uh, you know, where things are moving along pretty well. I think we're gonna have things pick up soon, just so people are aware. Hopefully we'll get new commissioners, but um, if folks can make sure they, they make it to the meeting, so we have like quorums um, starting next month. Um, you know, we'll start moving the city plan out. Uh, so I anticipate quite a few voting opportunities then. And whenever we have space, we're gonna revisit zoning really soon as we've talked about many times. So um, yeah, just get ready for things to pick up at least for, you know, November. Um, I'm sure we're, you know, we'll probably will miss the Christmas um, meeting, but uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, we can move on to general business. Uh, do we have any comments from any members of the public? And I see Peter's hand, so um, go for it, Peter. Uh, thanks. Um, as you guys know, I, 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 I occasionally come here to say some things, and there have been an awful lot of recent developments that I think are um, pertinent to what you guys are doing. Um, and, but uh, I'm wondering whether the future is... Uh, gaining on us um, if by the time you uh, publish the uh, the uh, city plan, whether some things will have already overtaken it. I'm particularly worried about the housing chapter in that regard. So let me just mention three uh, areas of concern. One is, as you know, there are some huge potential project uh, uh, development projects facing us, the Country Club Road uh, property, uh, VCFA, uh, Buildings for Sale, Habitat for Humanity that you guys have uh, been talking to, Stonewall Meadows uh, that you all know about, uh, the Bove Project. There's talk again about Sabin's Pasture. These are all large projects um, that if even two of them happen in the next few years are going to have a major impact on the, the shape of the city. And there are two points I just want to make. One is traffic. Uh, we really need to take a look at what these projects, particularly the ones that are over on our the, the other side of the river where I live, because, you know, there's only a few ways to get from the other side of the river to, uh, to, the, to the city hall side of the river. And you've certainly read in the front porch forum complaints about the Granite Bridge and about the, the, about the intersection of uh, uh, River Street with Northfield Street. Um, I, I, I really hope you guys are taking a very, very careful look at traffic issues. The second thing is, is you know, everybody obviously admits and we, we're facing a we're, we're in a housing emergency crisis in, in every sense, at every level of housing. And one of the intractable pieces of that is the cost of building. Okay, the cost of building is always good, is, is, is a problem, but what can the city do to help developers come in here and do the right thing in terms of infrastructure? Are there some things where the city is going to need to consider not really footing the bill for infrastructure so that sewer and water and electricity and so forth you know, are not on top of everything else? And this, this is something which is going to relate to my second point, which is, um, you know, uh, we've been talking for years now, and uh, Josh Jerome is beginning to do it again, about ADUs or about dividing up large homes, infill. They're not happening. Why aren't they happening? Because they're too damn expensive for individual homeowners or individual property owners to consider doing it. There are too many, there are too many barriers. And one of the big barriers, again, is infrastructure. If you have to put in a foundation and uh, uh, sewers and water and so on and so forth, the, it, an ADU can't possibly pay for itself. 
Um, so again, I think you guys need to be thinking there, there, you know, I mean, Josh has advertised that there's some money for the Vermont housing improvement uh, program. I hope that's true, but uh, it's still something which we may need to figure out some ways that from a zoning and building code standpoint, we can make these more possible for people and to work with people to actually do it. Most people are just scared away by it. Um, and uh, the, the, the final thing I want to say is that, um, I don't know if you guys know, but there's getting to be more and more talk about rental issues, uh, both uh, about uh, just cause evictions. Uh, I think that uh, this is probably going to come up in the city council and uh, talking about people continuing to insist that short term rentals are, are part of the problem. I personally don't think so, but we need to find out if they are. And um, uh, uh, and finally, related to all of that is the idea of a rental registry. The governor uh, uh, vetoed a rental registry at the state level, but that doesn't mean that, that Montpelier can't have a rental registry. And I think that that, that could be very important in, imp in, in increasing the amount and the quality of rental properties, uh, um, in, in, uh, rental uh, units in, in Montpelier. So I know these are, some, to some extent, these are, these are sort of more immediate and more down in the weeds than, than a planning commission is ordinarily concerned with. But I really think that if you're going to keep up with what's happening and if your, your, your plan is going to be a plan for the future, you need to consider these. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Um, so, you know, you know what, what we're working on. I think, I think a lot of the things you just mentioned are things that we're considering with the plan, but yeah, it's the plans not directly in the weeds as much as you were saying. Um, that's just consumes so much of our time. Uh, we are soon going to tackle the recommendations from Congress for new urbanism, which is zoning related to, you know, you know, making room for housing. Um, so uh, just to give you a heads up, I mean, you can, you can, I think you probably have access uh, at some point through emails, um, the Congress for New Urbanism report, but you can take a look at that again as as a way to know what we're going to be, you know, tackling soon as far as those issues. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks a lot for bringing those things to our attention. I think that's all good stuff for us to be thinking about, and it's definitely stuff that that we are thinking about. Um, do we have anybody else from the public to make any comments? Okay. Um, so uh, the next thing on the agenda is uh, just to, to mention reappointments. Um, we are still looking for good candidates. Um, if anyone knows, I've been trying to reach out to folks, but most, most of the people I'm thinking of don't live in Montpelier right now. Um, so we need to find some, some residents. Uh, but keep up the look if you've been trying, because we, we definitely need that. Uh, Mike, did you have anything to add there? No. Nope. The person I contacted apparently didn't follow through, so maybe I'll give her another reminder and see if she's interested. And otherwise, we're just going to have to keep looking. It, Mike, this is Meredith. Do double check because I had some issues when people were trying to apply to HPC that sometimes the applications were submitted, but the with the transfer of different people upstairs, those emails were being directed not appropriately. So the applications were getting submitted, but not getting to the right people who are handling the agendas right now. So do double check on that. If they if they sent one in, just make sure they like they should have gotten an email confirmation. They can forward that to you, and you can actually take it upstairs. Okay. Yeah, that's concerning. I, I hope that hasn't happened. Um, okay. Well, we uh, we next have on the agenda the presentation about the design review guide. So uh, you can hand it off to Meredith and go awesome. from there. Thank you, Kirby. Um, I had hoped Eric Gilbertson would be on, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary that he'd be here. Um, so I'm going to uh, share my screen some, um, but 
feel free to interrupt at any point. Um, I think just about everybody who is here this evening was here when we brought through the design review regulations. Um, so I'm going to probably skip over some of the how we got here aspect of this app, of this presentation, but I can always go back to that if you have questions. Um, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So um, first thing here, what are the design review guidelines? So these are the guidance the how how do people meet the design review regulations right these are not actually regulations these are not rules um you know nobody can can be found um in violation of a permit because they didn't do something that's in here as an example um but these are ways for both people who are applying to for a permit as well as um, the design review committee to understand how they might apply the actual regulations there's also guidance in here just generally on um, upkeep of homes, especially historic homes, um, you know, ways to, if you're, if you're trying to do an update to your home, ways to, to make that compatible, um, as well as just some general maintenance guidance, um, like things about sleep roofs. And um, there's references in here about ways to get more information on, you know, dealing with asbestos. It covers the whole gamut. Um, so, but the, the main point here is that this is going to take the place of the city, cityscape workbook that was adopted in 1970, or published, I guess, in 1976, that was the illustrated guideline on how to follow along with the 1973 regulations. I'm just going to flip through here. Um, so 2021, city adopted those new design review regulations that most of you looked at before they went to city council. And so once that happened, the HPC could move forward with working on the guidelines. So they got a um, consultant who did a lot of the work. And I'm actually going to pause out of here. So this is... Um, the core of these guidelines, these different sections that most of which tie into specific design review regulations. Um, all of these different sections, including how to comply with building code um, and, and how to do other things. A lot of it is geared toward historic buildings, but not everything. All right, um, let me... and my share screen and just go to the actual guidelines. Did everybody get a chance to look at the guidelines, the link that Mike sent around? I'm not seeing any thumbs up or anything. <laughs> I, I, took a, I took a peek, but you can assume that we did not scour them, I think. Okay, <laughs> I don't wanna, I just, I don't wanna do a whole lot if um, you guys, all right, so let me go. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Let me go because it's fairly long. So here's the table of contents, right? So there's a whole introduction section. This is going to have information a lot for applicants, including how to prepare a design review permit application, um, define terms, how to understand some of the language that's in the regulations, a whole bunch of context. Um, this includes both the history of Montpelier, as well as describing um, different architectural styles of buildings, building forms. There's a whole bunch of just background um, educational information here about the buildings in Montpelier. And the really fun thing about these guidelines is that with HPC's help and the files that the city has and new photos that people were able to go out and take, we were able to pull examples of city buildings for a lot, for most of these things, both the learning as well as the examples for guidelines. Um, so again, here's more information, different building components, right? Um, but then let's go back to the meat here. So the different guidelines sections. 
So like I said, each of these ties into a specific regulatory requirement in the design review regulations. And so this is all, this, this section here is all about building maintenance or rehabilitation, specifically windows and doors. And the bold sentence here at the top of these numbers is reflective and echoes a uh, language that's in the regulations. And then we went in and tried to flesh that out a little bit more for people so they understand what that sentence actually means. And then when they click on these different numbers, they get actual illustrated examples of what we're talking about. Um, and sometimes with a little bit more explanation in the um, associated with that particular photo. So we have done this for all of the different guidelines, both maintenance and rehabilitation of all the different aspects of a building, as well as building new buildings, um, or if you have to demolish something, or there's some information in there on um, if you need to deal with flood hazard area and you have to elevate a historic building, there's, it's all, all of these different aspects are in here. Um, you know, porches and entries, when you talk about historic preservation or design review, you have different things you worry about when you talk about a porch or an entry or a roof. Um, siding issues, you know, do, do you wanna, what kinds of things can you do to siding with or without permission? Um, so it's, it's pretty extensive. Um, and what the Historic Preservation Commission is really looking for from the Planning Commission is basically a blessing on this as a policy document um, because the Planning Department and HPC really want to be able to put this out as something that is a resource both for the Design Review Committee when they're making decisions about permit applications for applicants when they're trying to put together a permit application so that they understand what standard it is they're trying to meet. Um, the hope is that if they follow along with this, they can get the right information and, and make some different decisions um, about how to meet, how their project can meet the design review regulations and get that, you know, quick okay from the design review committee. Um, generally, there's a fairly quick okay anyway. Um, the design review committee is, is pretty good at giving guidance versus being really critical of things. Um, but we do have some projects sometimes that have to go to a couple of different meetings and this kind of information would be really, really helpful. So we're looking for the planning commission to bless this and then get the same from city council before we release it as actual policy. Um, and once that was released as policy, we'd be able to name it in the design review regulations. When we put those forward, we left um, spaces for that. I'm gonna stop my share here because there's hands. Um, but we left a space in the design review regulations themselves because we knew we needed to replace the cityscape document. So that's where this would go in probably in the next, next set of revisions that the Planning Commission made to the regulations. Uh, Gabe, you had a question? Yeah, so I think I'm probably the only member that wasn't here when you introduced this. And so, um, and, and I haven't read through the whole document. Looks like a lot of really good hard work. Can you just review for me the, um, so you mentioned that it's sort of guidance as opposed to requirements, right? So we're trying to help them, but there are things that are required. So the design review is that, that's, can you just educate me? That's the historic district has to go through design review. Is that right? Or who goes through design? Okay. Review? So there's two different, districts. There's the design review overlay district that's defined by the, basically it's in the zoning district map, right? And that is got, you know, governed by the design review regulations, which is section 2201 of the, the zoning regulations. The historic district has a role to play in the zoning, but its boundaries are not exactly the same as the design review overlay district. And the historic district is something that was mapped out um, even before Historic Preservation Commission um, and is defined as put forward in a nomination to the National Register of Historic Places at the national level. So the bounds of that are, we actually can't make it any bigger right now. It's like the largest historic district in the state, if not the country. 
um, when it comes to the number of individual properties listed in it. Um, so they they don't his, the historic district bounds don't have any regulatory um, you know power when it comes to the design review overlay. We've tried to make those bounds fairly close, um, but they they don't overlap a hundred percent. Okay, so this is really guidance for that design review overlay, and I'll look at that map. And, and so basically this is trying to give guidance on how that review committee would interpret the, the guidance and how somebody that's trying to renovate a building or make modifications to the building would stay in compliance. But there's room for there's room for conversation. Right. There's there's definitely there's and that's that's why these those projects have to go to a committee of people. I can't make that decision because there's always room for some discussion. Um and you know, when a building is on the historic register as well as in the design overlay, there's sometimes a little tighter standard in the regulations. So if you're making changes to a building that's on the National Register Historic District, there's is, is on that that register, um, they're going to look more closely at the the very specific details on those buildings. And are you changing those details? Are you removing those details versus a more modern building? that hasn't been called out for being a prime example of its type. Thank you, Meredith. I'm probably the only one here that didn't know that. Appreciate appreciate the guidance. Oh, it's, a, it's, it's not a problem. Um, you know, the, the original design review regulations in the 70s were very, very basic and, and, you know, seven criteria with just a few sentences for each to explain it. The new regulations are 14 pages. Um, and have a lot of detail to make sure that things are clearer and there's less, there's actually less wiggle room. There's still, you know, there's still judgment calls to be made, but it's a lot more predictable. And so these guidelines will hopefully further that even more, as well as just put out information and education. There's links in the online version to um, guidance from the National Park Service. There's links to other resources all around the state. Um, that we're really hoping will help people be able to do their full project with a little more certainty. Um, okay, so give me a second here. Were there any other questions, comments before I sort of moved on a little bit? Okay. Um, so I've got just a couple of other things to highlight from the guidelines. Let me go back to the presentation. Um, so is this the this popping up on people's screens? Okay. So, like I said, one of the things that is in the guidelines um, is guidance for people on what the design review process is. Um, and in the you know, this is just the PowerPoint, but in the actual electronic, internet-based guidelines, when you click on some of these windows, pop-ups open up to actually explain even more what's going on in that step. Um, so, you know, whether or not something requires administrative review, which is just here in the planning department, or if it has to go to the committee, following that steps along um, to how you get to your permit. Um, we've also got, like I said before, there's some really in-depth explanation about what different key terms mean. So terms that are used throughout the regulations um, are compatibility, essential form and character, in-kind replacement, and matching quality. Um, and in the online version, if you just click, there's a little eye down here. If you click the image, that's how you get this text explaining to you what that phrase or term means. Um, and then we try to make sure that in a few different places we have um, links and phone numbers, things so that they, they know who to reach out to if anybody's getting in here without us having pointed them there in the first place. Um, so as I said, hoping to get your blessing, city council's blessing. Um, and then we would roll this out to both to, a big rollout to the public. Um, it'd probably be more of an online rollout. We're not gonna do big mailings like we did during the drafting process. Um, but, you know, send it out front porch forum, city website, city Facebook, 
um, make sure people know that this document is out there as well as making sure that um, our design review committee has it um, in their pocket for when they're looking at applications. We do have a version that is printable um, that still has all the pictures. Um, it's a little, little clunkier, um, but we did make sure we have a version that's set up that way. Um, I don't really have a whole lot more to talk about unless you really want to dig more into the guidelines themselves, which I'm happy to do, but it really gets down into the weeds a little bit on that. Um, you know, unless there's a particular um, guideline and how we dealt with it that you want to take a look at. Um, like I said, we have some code compliance information that is separate. It's not something that's actually in the design review regulations so much, um, but they wanted to elaborate and let people take a look at examples of how to do ADA ramps or fire escapes or, um, you know, egress windows that don't then mess with the character of a building, ways to do it and ways that the design review committee would like. Um, you know, that's something that the design review committee can't say no to if it's a code compliance request, but to steer people in ways to be able to propose these things that still fit with um, a building or, you know, tuck it away somewhere, things like that. Um, so there's some interesting things in here, but I don't know what people want to look at and it would take a really long time to go through all of it. So planning commissioners, do you have any parts of the uh, guidelines you'd like to, to focus on or anything that stood out to you? I mean, uh, if we if we don't if we don't have anything, then uh, I could ask you some questions, Meredith. Um, let me know if this is putting you in like a I don't know uncomfortable position, but uh, are there places that you're aware of that may have deviated from the regulations or have elaborated kind of freely when it comes to the regulations? No, I mean, that was that was the whole point. This is guidance, right? And so the like the regulations, right? Don't regulate paint color. There is a section in here on color, but it's 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 not it's not it's never putting itself forward as this is what you must do. It's a hey, if you're interested in um, historic color, here's some ideas. Um, I can actually show you that page right now so you can get a sense for how we tried to approach this. Yeah, um, I know so, that. Right, it starts out right at the beginning. The city of Montpelier does not regulate color, um, but some people want to select appropriate colors for their historic buildings. So then it gives all of these examples for, you know, your main color, if there's, you know, typical colors for other trim, what those might be, um, you know, the Queen Anne has a whole ton of different colors because they used a bunch of different colors. Um, and these colors were just pulled from the national, from a preservation brief from the national level. Um, but, you know, there's a little bit of information here, right, about what to do when you're trying to strip off paint or deal with paint on a building. Again, it's not, it's not going, it's not stretching beyond the regulation. Um, you know, we've got, where is it? You know, the, the key thing that we have in the regulations is this do not use harsh cleaning or stripping treatments that can damage the original materials of a building. Right. We don't want people to use these chemical compounds that are going to totally break down the brick or the original wood if that can be avoided. Um, but other than that, in the actual guidelines part, you're not going into color choices, things like that. That was all in the um, sort of the context section. You know, some additional bonus stuff if people want to make use of it. Um, and where we tried to be really, really clear from the get-go in the introduction, this is not this is not regulations. This is 
information on a potential path to follow to meet the regulations, that doesn't mean that when a particular situation arises, that you're not going to need to weave in and out. Um, you, you know, it's that's why the, the regulations themselves are phrased the way they are as well. Um, give me one second and I can pull up an example there. Um, of one of those regulations. And this is why we had to try and explain what some of these terms meant. All right, so, you know, one of some of our key design regulations applicable to all projects, um, Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. That's the rule. <laughs> so a lot of people have no idea what that actually means. That's why we need the guidelines um, to give people context, to give people examples of, great, I just want to replace my door. How do I do that and meet that standard? Yes, Gabe. I guess technically I should let Kirby say yes, but <laughs> this might be um, for for Mike more. But you know, when we had the the dis discussion of reducing uh, the density requirements in the you know, fifteen hundred uh, zoning area, uh, if this had been in place, it looks like it doesn't quite overlap. When I'm looking at the maps, it doesn't quite overlap that same space, but it's pretty close. If these standards were applied. Does that answer the, was it AARP or somebody, you know, there was concerns about design standards uh, with, with the density. Would, would something like this answer that? Yeah, that was the, one of the main concerns that came up is that, um, and that was a little bit of the conversation that we were trying to get out of the city council was whether or not they would be comfortable and they could have, expanded the design review regulations to apply to more neighborhoods and they chose not to because they felt that um it's been very contentious and that's why we you know in 2016 and 17 we took a revised design review so we had uh, originally the planning commission had proposed to match design review boundaries to the historic district boundaries and that was probably the biggest outpouring of uh, committee and, and or um, public opinion, all negative on uh, on us doing that. Um, it was just crazy. I mean, I think we had 60 people here in City Hall to go and talk about how they did not want to have design review regulations expanded to include some of the residential neighborhoods like Liberty and Loomis are, they're in the historic district, but they're not in design review and they were very much opposed to being moved in. So it's always been a thing that there really wasn't the push, but we have design review that includes part of the historic district and part of stuff that's not historic. And actually there's a big chunk that's not historic. All of national life is not in the historic district, but is in design review. Uh, so we've got a lot of these areas that that are not historic so these design review rules are kind of broken into pieces all projects have to meet a certain chunk if you're historic then you're meeting this chunk as as well and then if you're not historic or you're doing something not historic then you're in a third box yeah there's a, kind of there's a whole separate new construction box where it's much more about okay great you still gotta you know be compatible with your surroundings um, okay, so so I'm hearing it would meet that require, you know, that comment from ARP. However, expanding it would be contentious. Yeah, and that's you know, it's it's part of the part of the argument is you know, ARP said we don't have strong enough design review rules. I felt we have design review rules, and I think they're they're very good. I think they wanted us. Uh, Congress for New Urbanism is. They're really focused on 
uh, form-based codes. So uh, I think we'd have to read carefully into what that document said as to whether or not what they really wanted to see was more form-based code type rules. Um, and so yeah. oh, form-based code kind of works well for new builds. So if you, you know, they were designed for places, you know, we're building a new city in Florida. So we'll, we can do very form-based codes and it becomes trickier to overlay form-based codes onto existing development. It's possible and everybody and people do it. It's just a little bit more tricky. And I think we would have to consider and the public would have to be willing to accept some design review rules um, being put in place. And I don't think it has to be a full form-based code to, to meet the concerns that they had. Um, and I think with a few modifications, we would be fine within a lot of our areas, but I think we just, I think we just have to think through all of the possible ways that this could be an issue and then find the least restrictive way of kind of getting those design review rules in effect. But one is, I think, just simply putting it into the design review district because it is difficult. Um, it's not difficult to get approved, but it would be difficult to do something really bad if you were in the design review district. Yeah, you could, there, there can still be stuff that people don't like, but it helps. It doesn't, as, as many people in the design review committee have said, design review regulations do not guarantee good projects, but they help weed out the bad ones. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think Mike covered it, but I would just, just to be extra clear, that report from Congress and your urbanism and, and AARP was basically saying, throw out a whole lot of zoning regulations and try to handle it all through design review which as we know from our experiences is probably not gonna go over well in Montpelier, but um, as also I think Mike was suggesting, we have plenty of room though to get, to make the suggestions that they're, that they're putting forward. I think that they can be compatible with what will work here. We'll just have to finesse it a little bit, but it's not gonna be as simple as just design review everything probably when we get to it, but um, the fact that we do have design review over so much area is certainly really helpful in my mind um, to making some of the changes that they're suggesting because because we do have that you know um and so okay so sorry for the the tangent there uh meredith but um yeah this is this is how design review is going to come into our like near future discussions um uh okay so uh did you have anything more Meredith, or are we still doing um, Yeah, I I don't have anything more to put forward, depending on, you know, it's, like I said, going through the guidelines page by page just takes a long time. So I don't know as y'all are really up for that. You have other things on your agenda as well. Um, I, I guess I'm kind of curious about the process. Since this isn't a rule adoption, it's not like you have to have public hearings. I'm guessing you would want to discuss the guidelines again, probably before you gave them any kind of blessing, because you all probably want to look at them a little more in depth in case you have some little tweaks or things that you don't like in there. We This is something where we can make changes if we need to. We we own um, the, the language. Um, it's a little tricky because we've, we've had a hard time finding a way to host it ourselves. So it's still hosted on the consultant's website for the moment. Um, but it is something where we can change some of the text. It's not something where we can probably do a massive rejigger because this was all funded with a grant. Um, but if there are small things or photos that people want to tweak out or some language we want to tweak, that is definitely something that could be done um, if on review people saw some things that they really didn't like. Um, yeah, so I mentioned how it would go down is if we do have things we'd like to change, we could either send it back to historic preservation and let let them know or we could um just you know up, give our approval as a suggestion for city council but with the caveats of you know abc not being things we love or something um and i'm not sure but mike and meredith what you guys would prefer for us to do but i could see us doing either of those 
Um, um, Mike, I'm sort of thinking the second option with the opportunity for HPC to submit its comments before it goes to city council versus us trying to actually make changes um, before we find out if they, if that makes sense. Before we find yeah. out if city council is on board with those. Yeah, because I think whatever comments the planning commission comes up with, it's going to be one where it's going to be helpful for the um, HPC to provide some comment or staff to provide some comment because it may just be a misunderstanding or um, some something else that they uh, planning commission members just need to be made aware of to understand the context. Yeah, no, I think so having. I think, yeah, I think I think if the, uh, yeah, I think so. I think you, if you, the planning commission, want to, um, you know, take a couple weeks to look at it, then we can put it on the agenda, and you know, people just go and say, yeah, we. I didn't see anything that jumped out at me, then you guys can vote it on through. It gives everybody a couple of weeks to take a look at it. And then we can send it on to city council for their consideration. That That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. We'll, we'll put it on our agenda for next time. So folks will have between now and then uh, to, to look it over more closely. And if anyone has any reservations in particular about any parts of this, then just bring them to our next meeting and um, we'll handle it then. So we'll plan to vote next meeting if that's all right with everybody. Uh, and unless we have any more questions for Meredith, I think we could probably let her go. Yeah, and, and Meredith used it a lot, so and, and is using it, and is getting to test it now. So it's kind of getting some tests. So um, I think that part's good. I did review it very carefully. I wasn't part of the development, but I did go through it pretty carefully from you know understanding the some of the history of the design review and trying to kind of be an extra set of eyes at the last minute to look through it. Um, and I made, uh, you know, a, a, a set of recommendations and they, they made all those changes. So I think, I think it looks pretty good at this point. So hopefully you guys don't find anything that's too out of line. It's okay. an incredible piece of work. I think it's amazing. No, we had a we had a very good consultant who had done something similar, but without the interactive aspect to it. Um, and HPC really wanted something that let people find the information they needed um, specific to their project. So I'm glad you like it. It's I think it's going to be a big benefit. Yeah, it does look tremendously helpful, especially for people who are have no familiarity and they're like all the background information seems, and it's, it's also nice looking. So well, and the other thing that's great is, you know, if somebody comes in and they let us know what their project is, we can go in, print off a few select pages with the information pulled up for them, print that off, and then also give them the link so that they can dig around some more on their own. Um, but it's it's got a lot of uses to it. I think it does a great job of just thinking back to a lot of the comments and criticisms we heard in the past, like it felt like, or it seems like they listened and, and it was a lot of like, I don't understand what this, this means. This is vague. I have no clue how I'm supposed to respond to this. Can you, can someone just tell me? And it, it seems like they tried really hard to do that, but, but also provide the depth and the why and some of the context but adding that interactivity is also important. Otherwise, it just becomes this huge document that's impossible to find anything in. So working that balance is hard. And I think I'm impressed by the, the work that was done here. Thanks, John. Yeah, I was just gonna dovetail on that very quickly and just say, this might be the first regulations-based guidance document that I actually enjoyed reading. So I thought, it was, I just think the layout is really well, it's just really well done. It's just, it's very engaging. And I think the examples, you know, that are given throughout are really helpful to sort of contextualize a lot of the regs. So I, I think this is really great. Awesome. I will, I will have to pass those thoughts on to both the consultant and the HPC. Um, so there's a lot of work went into this one. So thank you. 
Okay, well, thank you so much, Meredith, for your wonderful work on this also. Uh, and yeah, we'll just, we'll plan to vote next time, give people some time and... Um, Sounds good. I will, I will try to be at that meeting. I'll try and see if Eric's there too, in case there are concerns that are raised that we can just address, um, you know, at the meeting and explain things a little bit more if needed. Um, but all right. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay. Let's move along on our agenda. Um, moving along requires SC group. Uh, was there a time they we're planning to join Mike? No, we were just going to be reviewing our, ourselves. They're coming back in the oh. next meeting. Um, okay. But we did just want, because we didn't have a quorum and we did miss a few people, I, I just wanted to make sure I put in there the links to the current historic resources draft, um, which they want us to kind of look at and go through and make some comments on. So there's there's the historic resource draft um, and then the other examples that they had provided us, which I think was like Toronto and another one. Um, so um, just for Paul's benefit, because he's on the Historic Preservation Commission, although it's the historic resources draft that we're working on, this is at this point, we're doing the structure and the outline. Um, we're trying to get a template for the city plan. So we're not really in the details. We have gone to the planning, historic plan um, preservation commission, and we did the implementation strategy and we did the, the written bulk of the chapter um, which is going to be used to develop the plan. And now we're kind of taking those pieces that HPC had already looked at to kind of go and build out the web page of the storyboard. Um, and when it's done, then we'll go back and show the HPC, but we weren't going to get into the technical pieces of, um, well, maybe we should talk about this, or maybe we should talk about that in the H in this historic resources chapter. This is mostly for us to kind of look through you know, do we want this section down here? Should we move this section above this section? And and how does the chapter flow? And um, it's kind of thinking about this, not only for historic, but how would this flow for, would this also work for transportation and housing and energy and land use? Um, so that's a little bit of what we're doing at this stage. And then SE group will help us to populate all the rest of the chapters that we have that are done. And then hopefully, um, after the new year, we'll be able to start rolling these chapters out and getting a lot of public input. And that's our, that's our goal at this point. So one thing that we uh, talked about last time with them, we provided a lot of feedback about the headings. I think that um, their first draft, they didn't seem to, to um, completely get how our, how the chapter headings um, were meant to kind of be like, I don't know, an anchor for structuring um, the chapter. So they they change those. Um, and so my first question for you, Mike, is it, it seems like based on the link that those are not changed yet. Um, and yeah, I can when I looked three. last when I last looked at it, I hadn't seen many changes from the last time. But I also know they were going to be busy on another project, which is why they were waiting. They were going to skip this meeting to go to the next one. Um, was because they weren't going to have anything ready for this meeting because they they had work for another project they were working on. Okay, so uh, this is what it looks like right now. Of course, very early draft mode. Um, this would be what the the historic preservation chapter, as we as we put it together, uh, would look. Uh, it's, you know, it has these, the photos, it has the side-by-side -side stuff as you scroll down. Um, and so I'm just kind of slowly scrolling. And then below that initial part with the blurbs and the photos, they have a map with, um, as I assume, like just landmarks that are related to that chapter. So in this case, and some some background info. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll jump in real quick. Sorry, Kirby, just to go yeah. through and say I did reach out um, 
to Brian at the Regional Planning Commission, and he has sent those new data layers to Aiden, so she has them. So uh, a number of the things that were on my punch list, we did get through. So hopefully they've got what they need to be able to start um, making adjustments to the maps that they have here to put in the, put in the new data. Great. So as you see, like the, you know, they flag some of these locations and it kind of hops around the map as you get to each one, which is, I mean, it's kind of a fun interaction. And so, um, what so they labeled as the issues what we had labeled as uh how this relates to other chapters right so uh, the text down here is how it relates to other chapters um so so we're going to probably change that i imagine uh and then background is um the part of the chapter that discussed uh, the this the, I guess I guess it's kind of background. It's, this is like our intro section, right, Mike? I I had it kind of expected when we put put stuff together that the background was going to end up being integrated into the introduction. So we kind of had some of these background things that we were just. It was a little bit more of in in our written part. It was kind of a dumping ground of, of background information, what studies have been done, what things have been done, and, and maybe some of these, maybe not all of these, but here's some background information that we need to have that might, that maybe we put in here, maybe we don't. Um, but I think that was a little bit of my thought for the background, as opposed to having a separate section, an introduction, and then a, a separate section. I would kind of expect the background to be above the issues um the maps would be integrated to because we're trying to tell a story that's our primary thing is and what is the story we want to tell about historic resources and then make sure we add in enough background information into the general topic of what's important here's some background information of what we've been doing to kind of add context um that was my my thought and then we'd eventually get down to all right, what are the issues? How is this related to other chapters? And then what are our goals and what are we going to do about it? And how are we going to link to the, our implementation strategy? I, I, think, I think this documented historic district with 535 contributing structures, I think that is part of the background. Um, that's a study that was done. Yeah, so what I'm hearing you say is, is this section up here where it kind of takes you through the map that's where we put a lot of our background blurbs. And I think that that would be good. I, I do think that would, I think I actually, honestly, this, I'm just gonna be brutally honest because we're trying to improve things. It's a little bit too fluffy for me right now. Um, but it's like, it has four historic markers. It's like, it's like, that's a little fluffy for like, I mean, this is a city plan. It's supposed to be a substantive thing in my mind. Um, so yeah, if we had more background stuff up here and other people, please feel free to jump in. Um, if we had the background covered through the map process, I think that this could be made really, really a lot better that way. Um, and then and then having that and then not having a background section here, right? That's what you're saying, Mike. Um, and then instead of the issues, we can have like a way that we signify that this section is about how it relates to other parts of the plan. Um, we didn't come up with a great word in our last meeting, but like a, a, sh a short, succinct way to say, this is about the other, how this relates to the chapters. Um, what about cross-cutting issues? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think a little bit of what we were saying was it's not necessarily issues. That section of how this relates to other chapters sometimes talks about how this supports other chapters. And that was why we were a little bit trying to, uh, the, the word issues was what was hanging us up a little bit. Because I, I mean, sometimes things aren't issues. Sometimes they, they support this. This really is supporting X, Y, and Z. 
the, the word that comes to my mind, it's not perfect maybe, but like synergies or something like that is I think more descriptive of what this is trying to say. And it did, it, the, did the um, language for the issues, did that come from what we already had or did they just write that themselves? I can't remember. They peeled the issues out, but they they didn't take the, like I said, didn't take the positive. So they really did. I mean, when it says it's the issues, they went through our section that says how this compares to other chapters and they plucked out the things that were negatives. Um, so I think when we wrote it, we were trying to think holistically of, well, you know, how does this also support other things? So. These are these are yeah, things because I about. yeah okay because I well it, when they're put in bullet points I had a reaction I didn't really I didn't really like the <laughs> bullet points of the issues um, I thought the other parts looked fine but I welcome you know Kirby's suggestions too but but I guess this was already in the chapter the issues but somehow in bullet points I didn't really. I, I thought it was too sort of simplified to me, but and I, I, I think that's more more, that's what they're going to be comments. looking for, and that's what we're looking for is you know I, I don't like the bullets. That's per, a perfect um, commentary on it for us to then review and see is there a different way because they were just trying to show a number of way of ways of displaying information, and we can go through and and make an evaluation of you know. I really don't like the bullets, uh, or at least not in this context. I think we should find a different way of presenting. Um, you know, it could pop up as you're scrolling down, it could pop up in various boxes of how it's relating to these different items. Yeah, and maybe we didn't have this in the chapter originally, but I mean, always for me, like the tension with historic preservation is you know, we also have a big need for housing and affordable housing and housing that's affordable to maintain. So I, I don't know, to me, that's a big relation to other issues in our city plan, but maybe we didn't have that in the HP chapter and I just forgot what was in there. Um, I think that there's, there's got we we had to mention that I would think or maybe we thought of it it's just too obvious I, I don't know but I'm with you um, um, if we don't have that somewhere then it's worth mentioning no I'm pretty uh, sure it is in there that, yeah that tension that we're we're trying to balance it. I mean, I think it was pretty clear actually in the his, as it was talking historic preservation and energy conservation. It was very clear about this balance of these. The historic buildings have the embedded carbon, which it talks about in that third, you know, and and tearing down these buildings to build new ones. You know, from an energy standpoint, you're better off to renovate and maintain these historic buildings. But at the same time, the windows are inefficient and they're they've got lead paint and they've got um you know how do we how do we both keep keep it for its uh its energy that is embedded in its already construction and at the same time how do we improve the energy efficiency of actually using it um and that's this balancing act that we have So, so Mike, about about feedback. I mean, they they've already heard some of the stuff from us, but before the next meeting, um, like just for for like what we're doing right now, um, should we write down some notes to send along to Aiden before the next meeting as like a productive use of our yeah, comments right if now? People or? have them. Yeah, people have them. Certainly, get them to me um, by next week. I'm going to be working on a couple of other chapters this week, but my plan was to dive in and do a deep dive on this uh, next week, early next week, and maybe I'll get to it later this week. Um, but I've, I'm working with Jake uh, quite a bit on public safety, and I have a meeting on with two of the folks for community services this week. So 
Um, I'm trying to really work on community services and public safety chapter this week, and that's going to probably take a lot of my time. But I do want to get in on this. So if other people have ideas and thoughts, like you said, just anything, and as and they were saying this, anything. I don't like the font. I don't like the the layout, or I don't like the bullets, or um, I think that slider bar is wonky and doesn't really do much for me. And I don't think we need to be dealing with the slider bar. Um, they just put a bunch of things in here to see what we thought, um, and. I think part of it does get into a little bit of the of the detail. And I, I what I was going to try to read for was the story. And for in the back of my mind, I want to be able to write down, this is the story we're trying to tell and then be able to go through this and say, we are telling this story. Um, like you said, do we really need to talk about the historic markers? Probably not. Um, I don't think it's it's highly relevant to the story we're trying to tell about historic resources and why they're important. Um, it may be a side note, you know, um, there are historic markers or, you know. I mean, if they want to mark where the historic markers are on the map here, but, but yeah, as far as the text that people are reading about, um, yeah, I, I, I think you're, you're putting it a little differently than me, but I think we're saying the same thing. It's like, um, this stuff's getting in the way of the story and I thought we laid out story with the chapter and the and the the way that we did our goals and such yeah if i so, come up with if i come up with some comments i'll shoot them out to the planning commission i'll shoot them out to all of you guys to to take a thought you know, give it a thought and then we could send that to um to se group and and get aiden working on it i don't think it'll take them long i think a lot of these a lot of the maneuvers don't take long once you've got stuff going so I don't think it's going to take them a long time to go through and make a bunch of edits. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to ask as far as like process here. Um, so anyone, you know, give your feedback, give your impressions to Mike in the next week uh, if you have them. And um, but copy everyone else, uh, like just so that we're all aware of what each other are saying, like. You know, copy the entire planning commission and then Mike, yeah, if you would please just copy all of us and what you're saying to SE so that so that we're all using, you know, it's more efficient uh, for us to do that. Um, so let's do that. But also just quick reminder, don't get into a discussion in an email chain because of the open meetings laws. Uh, just share those and then whatever we need to discuss, we will we will discuss at the meetings um, when when this comes up. So, so let's plan to do that. Um, I'm definitely going to, yeah, I'll send my comments to you, Mike, then in that case. So, we, okay. So anyways, let's move along here. The issues, actually, that's more like synergies. Um, the background, yeah, can be moved up into the map for the most part, I think. Um, and then she did change this because I think this, or did she not? Yeah, this should have been aspirations and goals. Yeah. So so yeah. So what it act what it is is yeah the 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 subheader here is the aspiration, and then the things below are the goals. With their edits, I think we can. I think we might go through and make some tweaks to make sure it's accurate. And what we did, one thing that we discussed last time was having in this section a way for people to easily access the um, strategies from the goals here. So that people who are interested in a particular goal can, I think it's important that they can conveniently discover what we're planning to actually do about it right here where they're reading the goal. So we talked about that last time. Um, and Aiden, Aiden's feedback was, uh, she's still learning like what our website's capable of, I think, to, to know what the options are for different ways to, to link from here, or I'm saying link, but it, you know, 
there's different ways to provide that information here. Um, is everyone like okay with that kind of approach for this or what are, what are people's thoughts about how we're going to display our aspirations and then goals and then strategies here? Yeah, because this wasn't- So you're meant... saying- oh. oh, go ahead. Okay, you're saying there would be like a, a link in the goals that goes to the more specific uh, tangible goal? I can't remember. That is <laughs> like the after it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, like I'm not, I'm, I, I don't have a certain- particular thing envisioned because I'm, I'm trying to be you know just open-minded about the presentation side of it um but i do think it's important for when when the public when a user is interacting with the goal here that they're able to conveniently find the strategies from that same place oh the um, strategies right okay yeah yeah that makes sense i just was, wanted to clarify sounds good to me yeah, and I, th I think what we had talked about at the last meeting was maybe having, I mean, we're going to have a separate, we're going to go to a separate page or a separate place where we have all of that Excel table that'll come out in, in a different program, you know, with the way John had showed it before. But within here, we're just trying to, you know, that's for people who really want to dig in deep and understand all of our goals and all of our strategies. But in here, we just wanted to be able to go through and say, you know, I think, I think the way it was, it's written in, in here, it's uh, understand, appreciate, and preserve. So I think these headers, you know, understanding, what are we going to do to understand? And you might have some buttons that if you click on it, it'll just pop up a little box that would go through and say, you know, um, and, you know, engage might have public outreach program. And you might be able to click on it and go through and say, you know, the, the Historic Preservation Commission will annually be going through and doing, you know, these these types of efforts in order to accomplish these goals. Um, you know, it'd be just a little pop-up box and you could click on the different boxes and it would just tell you briefly what each one of these things is that we're going to do in order to understand our resources, in order to appreciate have the community appreciate our, our resources and uh, what do we do to preserve our resources? But it's not the full report that is in the Excel tables that are the implementation strategies. And I think if we do that, we might not need to do, as you scroll down, Kirby, you know, the, the how do we get this done? That was originally a summary of the strategies and maybe if we're having those little pop-up boxes, maybe we don't need these down here. Uh, Mike, actually, correction, the content that they put under this, um, it sounds like it's the strategies based on the heading they used, but um, this content is actually the, what have we done in the past? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, like this, this content is like, you know, if you remember from when we wrote the chapters, there was a section in each chapter about, you know, what have we, what have we done up until now? Um, so this is more like the his, a history of, of what's been done. And uh, I don't know where we got to with our discussion last time, but it sounded like people were in agreement that this can be moved down because this isn't the main, a main part of the story we're telling. That, that was my recollection. Yeah, I mean, the Historic Preservation Commission and the CLG, I think, are important. They could be up top somewhere, not not at the top of that discussion. But I think they're important pieces to have in your introduction and your background to talk about who, you know, who are the players, you know. And in this case, the Historic Preservation Commission, uh, as a certified local government, is a pretty, is a significant player in this and maybe it is, or maybe it is down here um you know i think we'll just have to kind of look at the context and see if it makes sense to talk about the players um the key players up here or down at the um, up top or down when we talk about the strategies yeah i think that it 
put I mean putting it up here it, it is more helpful for the story than some of the stuff that is here right now. Um, so yeah, that I think that could be a appropriate place for it. Um, so a question about the uh, you know the, whatever this becomes as opposed to the the spreadsheet and the documents that we've approved in the past. I know this is more policy related than it is regulatory, but people do use these when they come to public meetings, they cite them. What's the authoritative word? Is it, will it be the online, what the online content, or will it be, you know, the Excels and the other things that we've worked on? It's it's going to eventually be the adoption of what's on the website. And what we have in the Excel table is going to be used to populate. Um, the implementation strategy in the website. So all of that information will still be captured. Um, we just built it in Excel and in, in a Word document, and we're taking those and embedding them in here. And that's why, I mean, I, I think that we should make sure that SC Group realizes that, that um, like, uh, you know, we're, we welcome like wordsmithing that that helps make things readable, plain language, but um, the substance of it is does have like actual legal weight to it. So they they should be aware of that when they're um, if they're going to to change something. Um, yeah, and I think at this step, they're looking at, the, like we said, we're kind of looking at it as a template and deciding, you know, because probably if we have a how, how do we get this done, we're going to have that in every chapter, and we'll talk about what commission. So in transportation, you'll have the Transportation Infrastructure Committee and the, um, and the other Transportation Committee. You know, Energy, we'll talk about MEAC here. Um, so th there's, you know, there can be a repeating part of this that the question is, do we want to talk about these in our chapter? Is this important? And, and the main reason I asked, and I wasn't on the original discussion of this, but I didn't work in the chapter, but when I look what's in the folder and I look at what's here, it's more than just wordsmith, right? It's like, it doesn't really look the same. It's almost like totally different. So I just want to make sure whatever we're doing that, you know, we spent many months working on that, so. Yeah, we'll need we'll need to make sure as we approve this as it goes that that they're sticking to um, you know our intention. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of a, a mixing because when we when we hired them, one of the big things we hired them was that you know we're this is a new this is a new media that we aren't familiar with on you know how do you communicate well in a storyboard format, and you know we're not experts in doing that. And they are. So part of their job was to kind of go through and take what we had written and then start to turn it into something that would function well in a storyboard. And if they're, you know, obviously if they're taking too much, uh, I don't know, um, artistic license, then we'll just have to go and, you know, make sure they understand that. No, we're, we're kind of wanting to go back and, but we'll want their input on whether or not you know, ultimately they're the experts in how to communicate in this format. And we need to kind of work with them to go through and say, okay, here are the rules you should be following. And then we should go be able to go back and say, all right, well, this is what we wrote. And this is how I would adjust it to fit the best way to communicate. Um, so I think there'll be a little bit of a balancing, a little bit of back and forth um, because we do have to, we can't just write text and drop it in there like a, a big um, written chunk or at least that wasn't our intent to just use a big written chunk with some pictures. It was really kind of meant to fit this storyboard um, format. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that we're all, that this is gonna to work out wonderfully. Um, but, but this is like our first steps. This is why we're going through, you know, this, this first example. So moving on, uh, so how will we measure progress? And this one, I think I'd mentioned was was the only this is the only chapter we talk about those, and I think mm -hmm. that was going to be a place where we're going to have to either draw draw a line or move things out because we really we 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 can't have anything that changes. We can't have anything dynamic in a city plan. It's got to all be static. So um, 
linking to things that track progress. Um, and it may be one that, you know, I'm, I'm thinking a little bit, you know, maybe this is a place where we um, get through all these other things. Let's, let's approve the plan and then we can always work on these um, benchmarks and other points afterwards because so many times city councils and, and Kirby, you've been through this. We put a lot of work in so that city council can go through and take things back out and change everything. So sometimes coming up with a benchmark, it might be a little bit better to have them approve it in the same way that we just looked at a design review guideline. There's no sense building a design review guideline until after they adopt the design review rules. And I think let's see where they end up with their, um, where they where they end up approving, and then we can always come back afterwards to go through and say, okay, if this is if this ends up being your benchmark, because we could end up they can end up, up we could think this is what the goal is going to be. So here's a good benchmark. They change the goal. Now we have to go back and change the benchmark or else we've got things that don't match up. Yeah, I think it'd be fine to wait on that. I do like the idea of having the section. And then if we were, if we're trying to make this like a friendlier kind of subheading, it's like something like, how are we doing or something like that. And then each chapter will be a bit different. But I think a lot of our strategies lend themselves to a sort of how are we doing approach because a lot of the strategies are about increasing this or you know furthering that or whatever. Um, so anyway, I, I'm with you, Mike. That we can we don't have to, to spend a lot of time developing that out right now. Anybody have any more thoughts? or things they want to discuss now. It's totally okay to take your time and then just send feedback later to Mike and copy all of us. Next meeting, we, um, yeah, I understand it hasn't changed. We are planning to hear from SE Group in our next meeting. So they'll be responding to the feedback that we're going to be providing. And, uh, we're also going to um, vote on the historic preservation guidelines. And we'll probably also try to look at, Mike, you think one of the outstanding um, chapter aspiration goal strategies will be ready to look at by then? I don't know. I think it's gonna depend how things keep rolling. Okay, maybe maybe at least we could try to shoot for having aspirations and goals, or is that worth it? Yeah, I mean, I won't have any chapters written unless you unless you're going to be able to get on the art culture. Um, but considering I'm doing a bunch on the community services, maybe we'll have a few of those. Okay. Uh, did we go through utilities and facilities or utilities? Yeah, utilities and facilities. Did we go through that? Talking about sewer and water and. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I don't think we. We did not. No, we do have that. So you were, um, j just to clarify what you said about arts and culture is, um, yeah, th uh, the thought you had is that, um, You'd, you'd like for me to, to flesh out more of the chapter? Did you get a chapter? Because we did the, the implementation strategy, and then you were going to pull together the written chapter. Um, yeah, so we, and if you recall, we did, uh, all right, there, there's like, I don't know, four or five paragraphs of the chapter. And then um, you had talked about possibly like filling in some things that you were thinking about. Um, but, but if, but if that's not something that you're wanting to do, um, then yeah, I can try to flush it out some more. It's also fine for it to be a not long chapter in my mind, at least, um, uh, especially since as we see, like when it's being adapted to the storyboard, uh, things are being kept pretty short. Yeah, 
Yeah, so we'll we'll see. Like I said, I think I'll have a number of pieces going. Uh, it's just whether I get to wrap them up. I'm being with the cemetery and uh, recreation and senior center coming up. And I've got parts done, so we've got a number of pieces at the community services that we can start to look at. Okay, that sounds good. All right, so that's what I think we we know what we're what's in for uh, next week. Uh, so yeah, folks, get your feedback about the two things tonight um, ready um, if you have it, and. I think we're, we're good for now. Anybody have anything, any more instant feedback about the, the website before we move on to the minutes? Okay, let's, let's move on. Um, so we, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and just get these minutes um, done. Uh, we only have September 12th because we, we didn't have um, minutes for the other meetings because we didn't have quorum. Um, so if everybody can take a look at, like, like I think there were minutes for the 26th, which is helpful for people to uh, get caught up, but uh, we don't need to approve those. Just, just need to approve the 12th. I did have one small thing on the 12th. I think Marcella's name was Marcel. <laughs> I don't know if it matters, but it just looked funny. Oh, yes. But um, otherwise, I move approval of the minutes from September 12th. Oh, second. Okay, so we have a, a motion to approve with the, uh, the, the one correction to the name uh, from Ariane, and we have a second from John. Do people need more time before we vote? Okay, those in favor of approving Ariane's motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so the minutes are approved with the one correction. Thanks for catching that. Uh, and that's all we've got for tonight. Uh, all right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. I sure Marion to adjourn. Do we have a second? No. I don't have a second. Just has to stay. <laughs> what would happen? <laughs> Um, a lot I'm of leaving. Awesomeness. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kirby just makes a declaration that this is hereby closed. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take John's With joke as a second to Ariane's motion to adjourn. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> those in favor, uh, and those in favor, uh, say aye or cough or make any noise or don't make a noise. I, I have a great night. Yeah. Unanimous. Have a good All night. Right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Or see you second Monday. Anyway.